This is the 47th meeting between Georgia and South Carolina with the Bulldogs leading the 100-year-old series 34-10-2. South Carolina will be kicking off. Georgia will be receiving the football. Marty Simpson will be the kickoff man for South Carolina. And the deep man for Georgia is Jerry German. German will handle all of the kickoffs tonight. Jeff, a lot of electricity here. 75,000 people. They think that Brad Scott is their savior as the coach. And we are underway. It is a short kick. And taken down at about the 16-yard line. That is where Eric Zier and the Georgia Bulldogs will take over the football. Larry Bowie with the football for the Bulldogs. Georgia comes into this game with the nation's most productive college quarterback. He is the junior Eric Zier. Has 61 current school records and 11 SEC marks. Had a 544-yard game in 93. Could become one of only eight men to pass for 10,000 yards in a college career. First and 10 for Zier. Out of his shotgun, it is complete. Jeff Thomas with a reception. Picks up about six yards. The Georgia Bulldogs, let's set their offensive line for you. Some concern about Adam Meadows. Randy White, as you see, will be starting also. The backs are Zyre, Sterling Boyd is the back. Eric Zyre will operate again out of the shotgun. This is Zyre. And this time going long. Hassan Graham makes the catch, and Graham will go into the end zone for the touchdown. Second play from scrimmage, and Georgia out in front, 6 0. How about that, Bill? That is 77 yards. Hassan Graham went to Southwest DeKalb High School, and he has just struck lightning here with Eric Zyre. 77 yard touchdown pass. Well, Zyre had 24 touchdowns last year through the air, only seven interceptions, and this is the way you start a season and a season of a Heisman bid. Hassan Graham, number four, making the catch. He might have gone down right there, but he stayed up and went in for the score, and Georgia breaks out early 7 to nothing. Kenneth Parkman's point after attempt is good, and just that quick, Georgia is out in front. Let's take a look at the touchdown one more time, Bill. Eric Zier, Heisman Trophy candidate, NFL scouts say that he is the top quarterback in college football as far as the NFL scouts are concerned. Hassan Graham with all kinds of world-class speed goes in for the score. And, you know, Ray Goff told us, Jeff, that uh, South Carolina would try to do something quick, something dramatic early. The tables have just been turned. Still, the thing about Zyre is he has so many options to go. I mean, these, these receivers are so splendid. There's so many ways that they can get hurt and uh, so many ways that uh, he can go offensively to those great receivers. So it is 7-0. <laughs> there he is, Eric Zyre. It's a tough way for Brad Scott to begin uh, his coaching career in South Carolina. Of course, he comes over after an 11-year stint in Florida State with Bobby Bowden, where he was offensive coordinator and also offensive line coach. He took the job December 7, 1993, and he talked a little bit about how tough it is to coach here. There are some very rabid alums here who want to win, and they want to win right now. Bennett Richardson is the deep man, and he will take it from about his only three. Still on his feet, out to about the 34-yard line. Well, that was not very good coverage on the kickoff. Cannon Parton kicked it deep to the three, and he got a nice return to put South Carolina in good field position. South Carolina comes in with a well-known and mercurial Steve Tannehill, the junior quarterback, over 3,200 career passing yards. His results here have been mixed. The reverse. So the flanker, number 82, it is Kojera Ransom, the redshirt freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida, a pickup of about six. 
And South Carolina's offensive line, anchored by Vincent Dinkins, who is the fine senior, all SEC candidate. The backs. Second and six. Play action. Tannehill to throw. And he has his man. Enough for the first down. Terrell Harris with the reception. Six foot, 164 pound junior out of Miami. Enough for a first down. So that'll move the chains. No huddle. They're going straight with the play right here. No huddle offense by Carolina. Georgia with a, a new defensive coordinator in 1994, a very familiar name in the form of Marion Campbell. And Bill, there's been a lot of talk of what his impact will be. We will see tonight. First and 10 for Tannehill. On the run. Tannehill will keep. And knocked out of bounds. But Tannehill should have another first down for South Carolina. On the stop for Georgia is Will Muschamp. Tannehill is a different player than he was late last year. We'll get to that in a moment, Jeff. The lineup. The line, Storm, Kaiser, and Jones. And the linebackers. The splendid Randall Godfrey, the middle linebacker. Secondary, Carlos Yancey, Muschamp, Johnson, and Edwards. First and ten now from the 39-yard line. Play action, Tannehill again. And this time his intended receiver fell down, coming down to the backfield. That is Brandon Bennett. Bennett is a tremendous player here at South Carolina. Expected to rush for over 1,000 yards. He is the 10th all-time rushing leader here at South Carolina. Could be moving up on that. Second and 10, no huddle again from the 39. Danny Hill, complete. Pickup of about eight yards. I wanted Steve to mention Tannehill's been very active there to Terrell Harris again. Jeff, I keep wanting to mention that Tannehill's a different player. He cut off his hair instead of being a braggart like he was uh, his first couple of years here. He is now straight arrow and lets his on-field performance do the talking. Yeah, he says he is a lot more disciplined and he's a lot more comfortable with Brad Scott uh, with his scheme and with uh, what the plans are here for this program in the season ahead. He's even changed his diet. Penalty flag down after the give. Might have been motion to the backfield. The give was to Stanley Pritchard. Pritchard. Pritchard who went to Douglas High School, so he has a lot of friends and family watching tonight. There are 14 or 15. False start. Still third down. 14 or 15 players from Georgia who play for South Carolina and a good number of those from the metro Atlanta area. So that'll mean third and seven from the 36-yard line. There's 12 minutes, 23 seconds left in the opening quarter of play. Georgia on top right now, 7-0 after the long pass to Hassan Graham from Eric Zier. Tannehill. And it's incomplete. Threw into a crowd. Good defense by the Bulldogs. A terrific defense by the secondary. And Corey Johnson was right there. The sophomore from Forest Park. He made of Heinz Ward at one time there. All right, they're going to go for it, looks like. Danny Hill looking over to the sideline, and now they make the decision to stay in. All right. Greg Goff told us before the game, Bill, that he thought that they would do a lot of gambling on the South Carolina side to try and make something happen. And let's see if they got Georgia to jump. Looked like Matt Storm came across. But was he pulled? Starting to rain a little bit, Jeff. So Georgia takes over the football. And went talk, for it. It didn't work. You talk about quieting a crowd. If Zyre were to go deep right now and make it 14 to nothing before three or four minutes is gone and it would be a quiet crowd. Bill you take a look at the South Carolina defense they are okay up front they are okay at the linebacker position but when you take a look at what they offer in the secondary outside of Tony Watkins it is going to be very easy pickings for Eric Zire if they do not get a lot of pressure on it. First and ten from the 37 here comes the pressure Zire away from it has the completion he has his man 
uh, into South Carolina territory, and Zaire is on the move. Eric is having a great start. He is three for three for over 100 yards. Bryce Hunter with the reception, and he is the absolute best of the SEC. Here's his move. You realize he had 76 receptions last year for Georgia. That is unheard of at the University of Georgia. First down for Georgia now, operating at the 44-yard line. And yes, Bill, the rain is beginning to come down harder. Zaire in trouble. He will keep, and he goes down. Pickup of a couple of yards, tackled by Benji Young out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Also the home of Marion Campbell, which uh, boyhood home of Campbell. Boyhood is right. He's now 65 years old and starting a new career as the defensive coordinator. But he's a very young guy. I mean, I mean, you, you could take a look at how old he is, but he certainly does not act his age. Well, they got a lot of old coaches on. Him. Been around young guys all of his life. Second and eight now from the 42. Clock is running. 11 minutes, eight seconds left in the opening quarter. Oh, he is hip. The big number 93, Stacy Evans. And he is a strong player, the left end for South Carolina. He had eight sacks last season. The record of 10 set by Andy Province, the former Falcon here in South Carolina, back in 1982. This is that pass where they try to slide somebody across the middle at about the three or four yard mark and let him take off. And the big Paul was up there and stopped that in his tracks. Evans is going to be a factor tonight as he seems to be at every South Carolina game. Third and eight now from the 42. Fire from the shotgun. Uh-oh. That's trouble. Flags down. That'll be motion against Georgia. Look like Rusty Beatles move. Movement by the offensive line. Five yards. Procedure Five against down. Georgia. Bill, the offensive line tonight for Georgia, a concern. Adam Meadows has the ankle problem, as does Steve Roberts. Roberts not starting. Randy White is getting the call ahead of him. A White, the walk-on, the junior college transfer from Elizabeth City College. And Goff said he wasn't sure tonight if either of them would be able to play or be able to start. And we're getting our answer at least halfway uh, with Roberts not starting. Third and 13 now. Desire, pressure, incomplete. He was looking for Jerry German, but did not have enough uh, did not have enough time to get the ball away. Defensive pressure coming from Wiggins, number 27, and Chris Rump. And it's that offensive line that may have some problems because of the injuries that uh, caused that play to happen. Plus a good good play by the defense. All right, so it's fourth down. Belloc here with a punt. And a fair catch. And Toby Cates uh, downs it at about the 11. We'll be back after this. A year ago tonight, Brad Scott was part of the Florida State season, a season that would lead to a national championship. Now, 12 months later, he is the head coach here at South Carolina and looking at a 7-0 deficit as Eric Zire to Hassan Graham. The 73 yards has made it 7-0. This is County Hill on the give to Brandon Bennett, and Bennett is hit for a loss. The Georgia defense all over him. Wright was there. He takes the stop. That's going to be a pickup of maybe a yard. Greg Bright was there, right outside the linebacker for Georgia. Redshirt freshman from Ray Goss hometown of Moultrie. Danny Hill reading the plays from the wristband. Oh, that's become popular. No huddle again, Bill. And we'll see if somebody was offside there. Yes. Looked like Travis Jones was offside. Bill, Travis Jones is back this year after the kidney disorder of a year ago. Yep, he went into preseason practice last year, developed a kidney disorder, sat out the whole season, and is back now ready to go and a leader, one of the leaders on the Georgia team. Procedure call against the South Carolina, so it's second and 13 from the 10-yard line. Danny Hill again out of the shotgun. We're going to see a lot of passes tonight. Trouble fielding it, and swings it out to Brandon Bennett. Brandon Bennett. 
Bennett picks up maybe a couple of yards, but the rain has stopped, yet you get the idea that it is going to be a little slick out there. It has been raining earlier this morning. Uh, it was raining for a while here. It has stopped, but uh, it, it might make the ball a little bit slippery out there. Robert Edwards from his right quarterback slot. Danny Hill now three for four. Third and seven. And it is knocked down. Knocked down by Philip Daniels. The outside linebacker. So that will bring up fourth down, and Georgia has the opportunity for some pretty good field position to get that offense going again. There's a look at Philip Daniels out of Donaldson, Georgia. 6'6", 255 pounds, junior outside linebacker. Chris McCraney is back to return this punt. He is one of those guys like Scott Warner used to be in the early 80s with Georgia. McCraney, a lot of fun to watch and knows something about fielding those high balls. A plays for the Georgia baseball team, an outfielder. Derwin Jeffcoat is the punter for South Carolina, and he had uh, his problems last year, but that's a pretty good punt for South Carolina. Granny up to about uh, the 50-yard line, but we've got another penalty flag down. McCraney not that fast, just very quick feet and instinct to go where there is some daylight. All right, we will wait and see what this call is going against Georgia. On the return, a block in the back by the receiving team, 10 yards from the spot, first down 10. And that is where Georgia will take over at the 40-yard line. Still not bad field. shotgun again. Here's the snap, throwing, looking, throwing, and it is incomplete. Looking for number 12, that's Juan Daniels out of North Cross, but he could not hang on to the football. See the average time of possession tonight. 226. Meadows and Steve Roberts now are both in on the offensive line for EGA. The second and ten. And here is the give. It is to Terrell Davis. Davis picks up about five yards. First running play of the night if you don't count the scramble by uh, Eric Zier. How many times do you think he'll put it up tonight, Bill? 45. He's 37 now. Jerry German in motion. Sire coming back the other way. Hassan Graham. Look at the speed. And watch Graham. Look at him go. Oh, my. Graham down to about the 34-yard line. Hit by Tony Watkins, who stopped him. Watkins, the SEC the candidate. This the is defensive a, backfield. This is a beautiful play here. Look at the blockers out front. And when you have a man who's got that kind of speed, you know what else he's got, Jeff? He, he can pull away. He can give a leg and take it away. Last year averaged 19.4 yards per catch. You see what a big player he was and is pick up at 33 yards. There is the pitch. It's to Davis. There's another penalty flag. Let's see if this goes against Georgia. Yeah, that's got to be holding. Tony Watkins on the stop for South Carolina. Holding on the offense during the run, 10 yards from the spot, still first down. All right, let's see if we can pick it up. Probably a couple of opportunities to pick it up here. 
Greg Goff talked uh, coming into this season about some of his goals, and, and one of them is to try and cut down on the number of penalties that they had last year. He wanted to see better uh, offensive and defensive line play, a more physical uh, kind of football uh, employed, and they've got to cut down on those turnovers and uh, also on the penalties. Here is the screen. It is out to Davis. Davis looking for some room. And he picks up maybe 11 yards. Jeff, that is the fourth different receiver that Zaire has thrown to, and we've still got seven minutes left in the first quarter. He's hit four different receivers. There's movement. And they will stop it again. It looks like it's against Georgia. With Zaire being one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, we're going to keep you updated with the stats. He's already got about 138 yards passing. And we are just under seven minutes to go in the first quarter. There is a look at Ray Goff. Second and 15. Desire going long. And overshoots his man. He's looking for Juan Daniels. And that was great defense by the South Carolina corners and safety on this side. Look at the defense here by those three fellas right there. Terry Cousin is among them. That's just great defense. Cousin has it read perfectly. There was no place to go with that football there. He simply was not open, and Zyre let it go. So third down, third and 15. Six twenty-three left in the opening quarter. Georgia out in front, seven to nothing. Zyre going long. Oh, incomplete. They wanted Juan Daniels. Ball was there, and Daniels couldn't hang on. The coverage was by DeAndre James for South Carolina, along with Terry Cousin. But that was a ball that looked catchable. DeAndre James, on the defense, intended for. Intended for. Daniels. George is trying to hurry up on the punt. Brett Fallick now with the punt. Toby Cates is deep. And that's. About the 19-yard line. That is where South Carolina will take over the ball with six minutes, six seconds left in the opening quarter of play from Williams Bryce in Columbia, South Carolina, 7-0 Georgia. There is our score from Williams Bryce here in Columbia, 7-0 UGA on top of USC. Blake Williamson now at quarterback. For South Carolina, 6'3", 206 pound junior from Anderson, South Carolina. And we will see if Tannehill is hurt or what the situation is on that. From the 14 yard line, this is the give. It's to Brandon Bennett. Bennett stopped by Whit Marshall. Marshall had 59 tackles last year, played his ball at Lovett High School. Takes you back to another Lovett player from a number of years ago, Knox Culpepper. Development here for South Carolina, their fine center, Vincent Dinkins, an all SEC candidate, really the anchor of that club, a 6'2, 277 pound senior. And he is hanging on to that knee. Oh, he sure is. Well, that's good news. He got up. Good There's a look at Vincent Dinkins. Hey, Jeff, I'd like to take an opportunity to say hello and uh, get well wishes out to Terry Tatum, who is watching tonight from Emory Hospital in Atlanta. He's a good friend of Ray Goff's, and we'd like to pass our good wishes along to him. The second and two now from the 23-yard line for Blake Williamson. Two receivers top of your screen, one down to the bottom. The eye formation, here's the give, again to Bennett. 
Bennett trying to get outside. Does. That's enough for the first down. Jeff, I'm watching Tannehill. He's on the sidelines with his helmet off. Does not appear to be hurt. He's just out of the game at the moment. Corey Johnson comes up from his free safety position to make the stop for the Bulldogs. But not before Bennett gets the first down. Boy, he's a load, isn't he? He is a terrific player. He has 2,201 yards. He's 10th on the all-time list for the Gamecocks. Of course, George Rogers is at the top over 5,000 yards. Williamson, play action, rolling, looking, and it's incomplete. He did not have a receiver out there. He wanted Terrell Harris, but Harris was nowhere to be seen or nowhere to be heard. Last year, Williamson did not do a lot. He attempted 34 passes at 14 completions, 337 yards, and two touchdowns. It was two years ago tonight that we got our first look at Steve Danny, uh, Steve Tannehill, as he made his uh, college debut in the second half of that game from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Williamson will throw, and it is complete to Harris. Darrell Harris this time with the ball picks up uh, perhaps five. They continue to work on the knee of Vincent Dinkins. Boy, the huddle has really gone out of style, hasn't it? You just call your plays from formation. Blame that on Sam White. All right, Sam, it's your fault. All right, third and six from the 35 for South Carolina. They trail 7-0. 4.35 left. Opening quarter continues to run. And so does Williamson. He will keep. And he will have enough for a South Carolina first down as he is knocked out of bounds by Walter Rouse. Rouse was a pressure, was putting the pressure on uh, Williamson. He makes a good run here. Good scramble by Williamson. Pulled away from one tackler. Saw the yard marker and got there. Corey Johnson there. There's a look at Tannehill. I don't think he's hurt. I think he was ineffective on two possessions and they uh, tried somebody else. First down for South Carolina. New coaches will do that. <laughs> Toby Cates was in motion. They will call timeout. The South Carolina wants to talk about what's going on. Brad Scott will talk with Blake Williamson. We've got four minutes, 25 seconds left in the first quarter. 7-0, Georgia. South Carolina with a football at their own 42-yard line. Looking at Blake Williamson in his first series with the Gamecocks of this season, replacing Steve Tannehill. And they will run. This is Bennett straight up the middle. Marcus Williams on this time. Now, what the new defensive coordinator for Georgia, Marion Campbell, can do is maybe adjust a little quicker to changes in the offense. And let's see if he does it here. They're running up the middle now, Jeff. Marcus Williams on the stop. Pickup of five, second and five now. Boy, wasn't Goff just praising Marcus Williams all up and down today? It sure was. Williamson completes. He hits number 87. That is Boomer Foster, the tight end. Boomer is from Jonesboro. Enough for South Carolina first down. The rain begins to fall again here in Columbia. Another look at the big game. Well, the quarterback was pressured pretty pretty hard, but he got it away through the arms of the defender, and that was that. Give to Bennett. Bennett on the left side. Picks up another four yards. 
before he is tackled. Greg Bright on the stop for Georgia. When they run it, they're running it up the middle. Second and five now from the 26. Clock continues to run, 2.54. The swing to Bennett. And this time Bennett picks up maybe a yard on the stop. Matt Storm. Big Matt Storm, but he's not as big as he was. He lost about 30 pounds in the offseason and trimmed down to, what are they listing at now? <laughs> 305. The big fellow from Edmonds, Washington. Yeah, actually Walla Walla Junior College. Had been referred to as the Walla Walla Whale on occasion. At his most productive game in 93 against the University of Kentucky at 13 tackles in that game. Third and five now from the 26. And Williamson in trouble and he goes down. Sacked. Pressured by Philip Daniels. Philip Daniels on the sack. Fourth down. So that'll bring up fourth down for South Carolina. Watching from the left side of your screen, come and get him. With one hand, he makes it. There's Philip Daniels. He made a nice play. So let's see what they decide to do on fourth down. It is fourth and 11. They will apparently go for it. And Bennett is stripped. And the ball fumble. is loose. Georgia has it. There's a big turnover for the Bulldogs. The hit by Marcus Williams again, and Edwards comes up with the football. Robert Edwards scoops up the football for Marion Campbell's defense. Edwards is the cornerback that Goff says may be the best athlete on the field. There's the strip by Marcus Williams. So Georgia takes over at their own 28. Zire. Complete to Bryce Hunter. And Hunter is gang tackled. It is raining harder and harder. Larry Bowie now into the game. The junior college transfer. Well, I just saw Bryce Hunter check his wristband. Bryce had 76 receptions last year. What a year. Uh, just unreal for a Georgia receiver. Out of Valdosta. And uh, really didn't get a lot of interest coming out of high school. Nebraska was interested in him as a defensive back, believe it or not. Very quiet young man. First to 10, quick pass from Zire. Hunter can't hang on. Oh. Hunter had it for a moment but couldn't hang on. And again, the issue of the rain that's coming down. More of a drizzle than a rain. It'll make that football very slippery. 39 seconds left in the opening quarter. 7-0 Georgia. Zaire tonight, 6 of 12, 152 yards. 73 yards of those came on the touchdown pass to Hassan Grand second play from scrimmage for UGA. Here's Zaire. And it is incomplete. What a Jerry German. But Watkins was there with a big hit. Now you may have noticed number 15 in the backfield for Georgia is Larry Bowie, the blocking back. Oh, almost nice catch there. Bowie didn't have much to do with that play, but he's the young man from Northeast Oklahoma who has come in and uh, they want him for his blocking and he's done pretty good at that. Watkins is the oldest member of the South Carolina team. He is 23. Third and 10 now. Zaire in trouble. The run. And takes it out of bounds. And Ray Goff is hot. Zaire. 
Sigoff come flying across on the sidelines. I thought Ray believed there was a, a late hit there, but I don't really think it was. I think the South Carolina player dodged it. So that'll bring up fourth down. Toby Cates is the deep man for South Carolina. Brett Pellock will do the punting. And it is a lazy spiral. It takes a, a South Carolina bounce. Not good. Ball is at the 38-yard line. Trey Seip caught the ball. Ray Goff having something uh, to say to Pellock. He was uh, saying, that's okay. You'll get him next time. Not a great punt, that's for sure. Well, you're going to be very careful with Eric Soccer. The man is the franchise. We want to remind you of the 1994 SEC football championship game, December 3rd, is going to be inside the Georgia Dome. A limited number of $40 tickets remain. And you can get your hands on them. That's the give to Brandon Bennett, and Steve Tannehill is back in the game. So there may be a shuffling of quarterbacks all night long, or perhaps... Brad Scott was trying to get the attention of Tannehill. I'm sure he did. That is the end of the first quarter of play from Columbia, South Carolina, and Williams Bryce Stadium on the first weekend in September. The Bulldogs have a 7-0 lead on the Gamecocks of South Carolina. We will be back for the second quarter of play right after this. So we begin the second quarter of play with the Bulldogs on top, 7-0. This is the home run. This is the long ball, Hassan Graham, second play from scrimmage, and it was easy. That great combination, the big play combination of Graham and Zaire. You've seen it before. You will see it undoubtedly a lot in 1994. Tannehill, the play action. He will come across the middle, and he has his man complete. Uh, Steve Tannehill there with the good pass. He finds Toby Cates. Toby Cates. Cates may be the best player on this football team. He is an outstanding athlete. He had 27 catches last year for 541 yards. And that is good enough for South Carolina first down and now in Georgia territory. To give to Bennett. Oh, Bennett is hit. Bennett is hit by Travis Jones, and Derek Smith is also there as well. Pickup of two. Second and eight from the 44. Bennett needs 805 more yards to move past Harold Green's 3,005 yards to become the school's second leading career rusher behind George Rogers. Here comes the blitz. Tannehill. And it's complete. Tannehill has his man there. It's Terrell Harris. Tannehill to Terrell Harris. Complete and out of bounds. The man covering fell down, but I think he would have caught the pass anyway. Let's take a look at it. There's the blitz coming, but picked up well by the interior lineman. Tannehill releases. That is Harris's fourth catch tonight. And it is on the money, and he steps out of bounds at about the 31. Good enough for a first down. South Carolina on the move. Oh, Here is man. the give. It is to Bennett, and those are some very, excuse me, that is Stanley Pritchett. It is some very, very tough yards there. He is a tough inside runner, went to Douglas High School. Douglas almost beat Morrow last night, Bill, in those high school highlights that we had. Strong out of the eye formation. And seems to be a guy that Brad Scott thinks will contribute in this new fast break offense that he brings from Florida State. 6'1, 230 pounds. That is a big man. Second and four now. Ball at the 26 yard line. Danny Hill calling the play, as you can see. Quick pass. It is complete. Number 12, Toby Cates. Giving him a workout today, aren't they? Cates has been a busy man. That is enough for a first down. First down. South Carolina's best drive of this game tonight. We are in the second quarter. 
talked to Vince Dooley before the game tonight, Bill. He thought this was going to be a very close game that would go down to the wire. As most of his did, it seemed. But always a very conservative prediction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> First down now. And it is almost intercepted. It is batted. And Marcus Robinson was the intended receiver. Corey Johnson was there for Georgia. And when you see the ball fly around like that, you always think turnover. Not that time. Well, let's see if Georgia can stop him here inside the 20 yard line. They've allowed him to move pretty easily up and down the field at midfield range. Danny Hill is complete. Complete again to Toby Cates. And it is going to be very close to a first down. Let's see what the market is. Maybe just about a yard short. Corey Johnson on the coverage for the Bulldogs. Well, they're sending players deep and then bringing people under the coverage, and it was complete there. Here's a big third down and about a yard. The hallmark of Marion Campbell's defensive teams with the Falcons, they would bend but would not break. They would give up yards, but certainly when it counted, they did not. And that's enough for the first down. Give to Stanley Pritchett, the Stanley. big fellow. Picks up maybe two, but he's got enough for that South Carolina first down. First down. Now it's first and goal. Jeff, I'm wondering at this point, are we going to see some of those situational changes that Marion Campbell had talked about It more of a pro-style defense where you send in people for specific situations? And this is pretty specific, but nobody has come in from this unit who was on the field a moment ago. These fans are starved for a winner at South Carolina. Looking for their first winning season in four years. Tanny Hill, touchdown, has Toby Cates. His favorite target of the night. There was a and mistake. The place back erupts. There. Definitely a defensive lapse that time. A couple of defenders looked at each other like I got him, you take him. Let's take another look at it. As Reed Morton in for the point after attempt. See if he can tie this game. And it is good. So with 11 minutes and 46 seconds left in the second quarter, we are all tied from Columbia, South Carolina, and Georgia, 7-7. It was a terrific drive, 10 plays, 62 yards, and this seven-yard pass from Tannehill to Cates. And that's where we are. It's all tied up at seven. Jerry German, the deep man for Georgia, along with Juan Daniels and McKinney. Tannehill now eight for 12, 73 yards. So benching Steve Tannehill, Bill Hartman, may have gotten his attention. All of a sudden, everybody wants to talk to him. That may be the president on the telephone says that he is a lot more disciplined here in 1994, has even changed his diet. Brad Scott is the man responsible for all of that. So Morton kicks deep. And this is McCraney. McCraney with plenty of room. And a penalty flag comes flying through. He's about to the 28-yard line where Eric Zier will take over the football. We'll see what the penalty is. There's a shot of Ray Goff and David Kelly, the former Dunwoody High School coach. David there signaling them. Five-yard face pass, tacked on to the end of the run. The first down 10. All right, so a break for Georgia. David Kelly. David Kelly. What a terrific run he had at Dunwoody High School. Quad A state championship last year, and he's come to be on Ray Goff's staff as the running back coach. First down, 34-yard line, 7-7. Here's the give to Terrell Davis. Davis fights to get back to the line of scrimmage before he is wrapped up. Terrell Davis. And the carry. One of those. Stop David Turnipseed, who is that man, who is just a tremendous player. 
That's Dinkins. And it looks like his ankle. Vincent Dinkins through for the night. And hopefully it is not so severe that he will be unable to play next weekend. I wonder if we're going to see some run game here. Georgia wanted to get the running game going a little bit. Hunter in motion, top of your screen. He gets the pass. Hunter looking for room. This is Bryce Hunter, has the Georgia first down, gets to about the 49-yard line. Pickup of about 16 yards. Well, here you see Hunter in motion, and now they rely on that quickness that he's got, the good moves. Bryce Hunter catching 76 passes last year. Just unbelievable. Last time we were here in the stadium two years ago, it was a, a very quiet first half and a very close one until Georgia broke it open in the second half. First down now from the 48. Here's the pitch to Davis. Oh, Davis face will mask. lose yardage. I saw the face mask too, Bill, but there is no penalty flag. I think he got away with it. Neither of us have the flag. Rump on the stop. Last time we saw Rump here at the stadium, he was uh, moved from his linebacker position to defensive end. And he has been a very solid player in this game box uniform over the years. Davis. Oh, so a loss of a yard, second and 11 now from the 47. No shotgun on this drive yet. Desire going long, uh, overshoots his man. One at Juan Daniels. And Eric was just a little too tall. In the offseason, Eric Zier worked on his body fat levels, trying to get them down as low as possible. Do you think he succeeded, Bill? He did. He is uh, no longer as fat as he used to be. But to say he was fat is... <laughs> now it's third down. Desire. This is Hunter. And Hunter has enough for the UGA first down. Benji Young on the stop for South Carolina. But they have so many ways to sting you, Bill. Uh, that receiving core is so tough. Trying to stop Hunter on that kind of move is almost impossible. Remember, they tried this play earlier in the game and it was batted down. Well, this time it is not. Bryce Hunter makes the catch and turns it into a first down. I'm going to work on my body fat level. <laughs> Too late. Now in South Carolina territory at 41. This is Davis. And nothing doing against that South Carolina yeah, interior line. Aubrey Brooks is there. Brooks is a junior from Sumter, South Carolina. Last year had three starts. Started in the, uh, the final part of the season. Had eight tackles against Kentucky last year in one of those late starts. Zier tonight now, 8 of 16, 179 yards. Boy, the script has changed on the offense, hasn't it? Mixing the run and the pass now, not using the shotgun. Second down, 9 to go. Zier. And it is complete. Jeff Thomas saw the reception. Pass complete to Jeff Thomas. That is good enough for another Georgia first down, or is it, Bill? Yes, it is. Yes. I like this drive, don't you, Jeff? It's an excellent drive. Zyre throwing the ball around, mixing it up. Hunter, Thomas, Graham, Davis, everybody getting a piece. First down now from the 30. Desire in trouble. Will keep and goes down at about the 25-yard line. Pick up of five. Bring up second and five. Chris Rump makes the stop. Uh, as we take a look at the replay, Eric Zyers had quite a week. There were rumors that he had broken his hand when he hit it on a practice player's helmet. There were rumors that he would be ineligible when his picture appeared in an automobile sales ad. Unbeknownst to him. Unbeknownst to him. He is eligible, and he did not break his hand. Nobody ever said it was easy to be a Heisman Trophy candidate <laughs> coming into a season like this. Second and six now. 
the pitch, Davis. Left side, penalty flag. Davis has enough for the first down, but let's wait and see what that call will be from the official. Well, it's probably the classic holding on the corner. Tony Watkins is signaling that it's against Georgia. Now let's see if the referees concur. Uh, it looks like they will. Right holding during the run by the offense, 10 yards from the spot, still second down. You're trying to hold your man while the running back turns the corner. Sometimes you have to do it illegally. Well, it's the opening game of the year. You expect to see some penalties, but I suppose uh, Ray Goff doesn't want to see it at any time. So that means second and 16. Jerry German motion top of your screen, number 17. Zyre, quick drop, quick release. It is Larry Bowie, and Bowie with some room. Bowie. Stopped by Tony Watkins. Pick up of maybe eight, maybe nine yards. Larry Bowie, number 15, junior college man from Northeast Oklahoma. Originally from Anniston, Alabama, six foot, 218 pounds. Third and one, what do you do here, Bill? South Carolina has been fairly effective at stopping Georgia against the run. I like the little toss to uh, Terrell Davis. Eric Zyre will call timeout. Well, there's Brad Scott, the head coach who came from Florida State, brought three assistants from the Seminoles with him. That's a lot of, that's four coaches from the national championship team. And I asked uh, Wayne McDuffie, the Georgia offensive coordinator and who used to coach at Florida State, it says, if you lose four coaches off of the championship team, that's, that's devastating, isn't it? And he says, no, it's when you lose four players off the national championship team that you're hurt. Yeah, how about the numbers on Brad Scott? During his tenure at Florida State, the Seminoles were undefeated in 11 straight bowl games. They were 10, 0, and 1. This time out is charged to South Carolina. I asked Ray Goff how he thought Zyre had handled all of the hype of the Heisman and uh, all of the hype that comes with being such a remarkable football player. And he says he hasn't seen anybody handle it any better than Eric Zyre. I mean, his level of maturity has been staggering. Big play, Jeff. Third and two. First down, Georgia fumble, South Carolina has it. Larry Bowie on the give, was stopped initially, then squirmed free for the first down, but lost the football, and South Carolina has it. And that's a big turnover on a drive where Georgia was moving the ball. That is right. Georgia would have had a first down deep in South Carolina territory. Instead, Ray Goff is looking at the ball going the other way. Let's see if we can take a look at the hit. Good, good run there. Slipped out. I don't think anybody really got a terrific helmet on it. A lot of churning in there, and the ball came loose, and South Carolina has it. South Carolina with the turnover. And they will take over at the 15-yard line. Six minutes, 56 seconds left. In the first half of play, it is 7-7. Mike Moretti, his first carry of the night, 5'10", 180-pound junior from Miami. Adam Lance has been third on the depth chart. Adam Lance, Northwest You got to watch out. Uh, they throw the ball to Reddick out of the backfield. I like to use him as a short pass receiver. Pick up of three, second and seven. And to give straight ahead to Pritchett. Not a lot of room there. Rouse on the stop. So third and five. 
Tannehill will throw. Complete. And enough for the first down. Terrell Harris is there for the Gamecocks. To Terrell Harris. And they will get a fresh set of downs. Take a look at how it developed. Nice pass by Tannehill. He's having a pretty good night. They know where the down marker is, what they need for the first down, and they get it. Tannehill now 8 for 12, 73 yards. One touchdown. And another completion. Number 82 is Calvin Owens, a redshirt freshman out of North Augusta, South Carolina. Nothing fancy about this bill, just quick pass, pick up a four. A lot of big guys in the middle there, pushing and shoving against each other. Tanny Hill now has 82 yards, Zaire 201 yards in the passing competition. And it's incomplete. Looking for Marcus Robinson. Richard Schlesser, Richard Schlesser, reporting to the Northwest box office. Tannehill got about as much hype and as much attention before last season as any player in recent memory. It seems like everybody was doing a story on him. There was the belief that he was going to have a great season. And it started out that well. It just didn't finish as such. Third and six now. Boy, big hit. Buzz champ on the stop. Man, did he pound Toby Cates. Toby Cates. Will Muschamp out of Rome, Georgia. Chris McCraney is the deep man for Georgia. Jeffco. And Derwin Jeffco. That is something that South Carolina wants to improve upon this season. They were 88th in the country as far as punting went last year. And this is a short spiral. Well, that didn't Not help him. Not a very good punt at all. And Georgia with excellent Mike field Smith. position. They will take over. 4.43 left in the first half. Carolina and Georgia, seven. It is the opener for Georgia and South Carolina. And men, they love their football here in South Carolina. 75,000. And williams Bryce Stadium, first to 10 now, 38-yard line. This is Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis has some room. Look at him turn it outside. He has enough for a first down pickup of 14. DeAndre James, James and Terry Cousin there for South Carolina. The script has definitely changed. Georgia talked about running the ball more, and they are doing that here in the second quarter. Davis from San Diego originally was recruited to play for Long Beach State. Played for Willie Brown and replaced George Allen when he died. Uh, Allen recruited uh, Terrell Davis. Total yards tonight, 231 to 181. It is tough being a running back when you play behind a quarterback as fine as Zyre, who puts it up as many times as Zyre does. First attempt from the 42, play action. Zyre has the completion to Jeff Thomas. Thomas is very close to another Georgia first down. Jeff Thomas. And he should have enough for the first down. You know, it is tough to play when you got a quarterback like Zaire, but even with that, he gained 824 yards, which is not a bad season. Well, it is not enough for a first down. It is, it's like less than one. Second down. The pitch to Davis. And Davis has the first down for Georgia. Stopped by Aubrey Brooks. And the right linebacker. Terrell Davis made a nice move on that play. He could have been boxed in. And with a little spin, he was able to get the first down. Georgia moving the football just like they were the last drive. Stopped by the turnover by Larry Bowie. NFL scouts say that Terrell Davis is the third best senior back 
in the country this year. Clock is run at 3.58. First down now. Desire. Complete. That is Bryce Hunter. Tough catch. It was a tough catch. Bryce Hunter making a very, very good catch on this play right down around the 21-yard line. Take a look at it. Has to go down and make sure he's got it and does. Pickup of nine. Call it second and one now from the 22. Juan Daniels, top of your screen. Davis in motion. Fumble. Oh, my God. South Carolina has recovered again. Chris Rump, the recovery for the Gamecocks. And does history repeat itself? It certainly did on consecutive drives for Georgia. And both times they were fumbles off of the running game. Jeff, I remember when Vince Dooley was the coach and he didn't pass a whole lot. People used to ask him why, and he says too many bad things can happen when you pass. But look at this. When you run the football, a lot of bad things are happening here. That was a huge hit by Hank Campbell. Coming back from a fractured foot that he suffered last year early in the season. And he is healthy and nasty. And what a tough hit. So South Carolina has it. It's 7 7 in the second. How hard did Campbell hit Larry Bowie? So hard that the C dropped off his uniform. You'll be the judge. Oh, look at that. That's a high C. <laughs> Lost at sea. Yes, sir. This is Bennett, and Bennett with plenty of room has a, another South Carolina first down. So the Gamecocks keep it on the ground here. And it pays some dividends. Second fumble tonight for Bowie. Here's the replay of the run. And he had all kinds of room. It's into the defensive secondary. And Finally is knocked down, but not after a good game. First down. And straight up the middle, no room to start. Stanley Pritchett on the carry. Stanley Pritchett on the give. Bill Ford reports first aid. Lower east side. Bill Ford. A couple of interesting scores from today. Georgia Southern beaten by Miami 56 to nothing. Florida has a very large lead on New Mexico State. That game is still going. Second and eight, Tannehill going long, and it is picked off, intercepted by Carlos Yancey. Here's Yancey, and he's got some running room. Yancey across the 40, out at about the 44-yard line. So Georgia is back in business. They have the football back after the poor pass by Steve Tannehill. There was just nobody there for Tannehill. A ill-advised pass. The defender turned into a pass receiver on this one. He was almost like a split end once he realized the pass was way overthrown. Catches it on the run. And then starts looking for his blockers. Nice return by Carlos Yancey. So Zaire has a first down at the 44-yard line. Florida leads New Mexico State 63 to 21 in the fourth quarter with six and a half minutes left. No mercy from Steve Spurrier tonight. And that's incomplete. Oh, no, they're going to give it to Are him. Are they going to give it to him? The referee was behind it. It was hard for him to see, but clearly, Bill, I, th I think he trapped the ball. Let's take a look and see. That'll bring up second and five. Second and um, Skip. Yeah, it skipped in there. It happened. We are at 2.05 left in the first half. Screen to Davis. Davis into South Carolina territory. And he has it up for a UGA first down. Let's see where they mark that ball at. Hank Campbell. 45-yard line. Hank Campbell on the stop. Or shall we call him Hank Ample now? <laughs> Jarrell Davis made a good effort to get the first down. He was stopped short, and the good effort got Georgia the first and 10. 
Well, it's the third possession in a row that Georgia has been able to move the football against South Carolina, but a couple of turnovers have stopped the Bulldogs. Desire, and he is hit by Chris Rump as he tried to throw that ball. Boy, you got to watch your back here. Rump is very quick. Terrell Davis on the right of your screen was supposed to pick up that man and did not. And the sack was laid upon him. See Roberts and Adam Meadows both in there. Second and ten. Complete. Jeff Thomas. Jeff Thomas. Thomas pick up a perhaps six. Looks like Eric got dinged a little bit on his uh, left hand. There's Thomas making his cut. Okay. And then wrapped up by a couple of defenders who weren't going to let him get that other three yards that he needed for the first down. Third and three now. Fans on their feet here at Williams Price. Gary German in motion. Here comes Zyre. Complete. Good catch. What a catch by Juan Daniels. Look at Daniels. Touchdown, Georgia. Juan Daniels with a marvelous catch. A 37-yard touchdown for the Bulldogs. And they jump out to a 13-7 lead. Point after attempt on the way. Boy, that was a great catch and even a, a, a better run, if that's possible. Eric Zyre is a good quarterback, but he has the best receiving core in the Southeastern Conference and arguably the best anywhere in the nation. And the point after attempt by Cannon Parkman is good. And all that with 33 seconds left before the end of the first half. Here's another look. Zyre's looking and makes the pass. He has to go up oh, for it, then get away from two defenders. Turn on that speed. Man. What a move that was. Boy, when you extend yourself up, you're open for some injury. But he broke away and made the touchdown. Desire now 16 of 25, 275 yards and two touchdowns. Eric gets nailed on oh. the play. Boy, did he get nailed. That drive is five plays, 56 yards. And the 37-yard touchdown pass to Juan Daniels. Boy, Zyre took a nasty shot there, didn't he? Yep. I say that he'll throw the ball at least. I said 45 times. Now I'm going to amend that to say at least 45 times. Yeah, if my math is correct, he is now on pace to uh, eclipse his all-time passing night uh, when he threw for 544 yards against Southern Miss. All right, we got 33 seconds left. Brandon Bennett is the deep man for South Carolina. And he's got a bit of a hole. He's got more than a hole. And Bennett up to about the 39 or 40 yard line. So South Carolina's got a couple of plays, perhaps 24 seconds left. Trey Seif on the stop for Georgia. Trey Seif. Special teams are not doing it tonight for Georgia at all. Well, a couple of Hail Mary passes, of Big Ben passes from Tannehill before we go into the locker room. I want to remind you at halftime, Bill will be talking with Vince Dooley. We will have a news update from the Channel 5 studios. And a feature on Eric Zier. All of that straight ahead on the halftime show. He's Tannehill. Plenty of time. And it's incomplete. 14 seconds left. Plenty of time, Jeff, but Georgia had only two and then a third rusher on the play. Everybody else was covering pass receivers. Derek Bird with a lot of pressure on Tannehill there at the end. <laughs> Daryl Nicklau was the intended receiver. First we have seen of him tonight. 
14 seconds left. And they will just be content by running it out. Brandon Bennett. Stanley Pritchard. Uh, that is Stanley okay. Pritchard. Marcus Williams on the side. Well, South Carolina called timeout, so maybe they won't be content. Second down. Gamecock. Ray is giving what for to that, that referee. Look at him. So we've seen an interesting first half. It has been a, a productive first half for Georgia offensively. They have not gotten as many points as they would like to out of it, but they have accumulated a lot of uh, a lot of yards. Uh, the two fumbles by Bowie hurt them, but. Zaire has been sharp and he has been dishing it around to everybody. It is hard to stop the Georgia offense when he looks at so many different targets. Usually one or two key receivers. Zaire has three or four, it seems like. On the top of the list, Bryce Hunter, of course, Hassan Graham. Danny Hill, meanwhile, 11 of 18, 88 yards, one interception. play left before uh, we go to the break. That is it. And no flags on the play. Half time. The 14, Carolina 7. All right, so it is the end of the first half. The UGA has the lead on South Carolina. It is 14 to 7. And not unlike uh, the game from two years ago here but we saw these two teams get together when it was very close in the first half and Georgia was able to to really mow them down in the second half we will come back to Williams Bryce in Columbia after this break there has 250 or 275 yards at halftime some numbers to take a look at the Bulldogs as far as total net yards versus the Gamecocks 306 to 208 Net rushing yards 31 to 91 in favor of South Carolina there. Uh, total passing yards 275, as we mentioned, for Georgia, 117 for uh, South Carolina. Uh, fumbles, the dogs have had two tonight by Bowie, and that's something they want to rectify in the second half. I'm sure there has been uh, one fumble by South Carolina tonight. And the time of possession has been somewhat even, 1407 for Georgia and 1553 for South Carolina. And what makes those two fumbles even worse, Jeff, is they were pretty deep in South Carolina territory. So you don't fumble there, you might have two more scores. Yeah, they were in the midst of some really hot drives at that point. They were moving the ball down very easily, and uh, they were stopped by those fumbles. So th those are the kinds of things that Ray Goff was talking about heading into this game that they've got to cut down on the turnovers in 1994 they've got to cut down on the penalties he wants to see his club a little bit more physical on both lines of scrimmage and uh, of course they want to be able to run the ball a little bit better you've got to have a little bit of a running uh, ground attack and, and that's something that you can't do is cough it up players are getting ready to go in the second half down on the field the teams are back on the field and we are about to get underway for the second half and Jeff one of the things I wonder that will be adjustments that will be made is on defense I think Georgia gave up a lot of yardage to Pritchett the fullback to Brandon Bennett and of course Tannehill throwing the ball rather effectively well we talked with Ray Goff before the game and asked him if you get to the point perhaps where Eric Zier has been very effective and you have a lead in the third or fourth quarter uh, would he be willing to take a look at Mike Bobo and he said that he is that, that he would like to see him play and that he is not overly concerned with trying to get uh, Heisman kinds of numbers for Eric Zier he doesn't feel any pressure when I asked him about you know Zier would probably at some point in his uh, stay at Georgia like to have 10,000 yards in a season uh, Goff said I don't care I don't, I don't even know that I don't care about the numbers just want to make this football team better Georgia getting ready to kick off to start the second half. Cannon Parkman will kick off for Georgia as we begin the second half. And we are underway. Uh, Georgia has a 14-7 lead right now. It is Brandon Bennett with the football. Out across the 25, the 30. Out across the 40. Into Georgia territory. Look at Brandon Bennett, who is the terrific uh, tailback in this offense and also on special teams. Just super for Georgia on the stop. 
Brandon Tolbert makes the hit, but what a return by Brandon Bennett. Watch the right side of your screen and watch the alley open up. Look at the blocking to your right, and now the blocker on number 47. Brandon Bennett following the blockers down, and he's across the 50 inside Georgia territory. That was a terrific run. The best runner that they have had in seven years since Harold Green was here in 87. Now this is the give straight ahead. And no room at all for Bennett. Rouse on the stop, along with Robert Edwards. The pickup of two yards. Ball now spotted at the 42-yard line, second and eight. That Georgia special teams need some work. Not been a very good start for them. And here is the pass. It is complete to Toby Cates. To Toby Cates. And they will go with the no huddle offense once again. Something they did in the opening quarter. Third and six. Tannehill complete has his man for the first down. It is Terrell Harris. Jeff, they've done that well on third down conversion plays. They've known where the yard marker is. They get there, they make the catch for the first down. Looks like Carlos Yancey is hurt. No huddle again. At the Georgia 31 yard line, first and 10. Yancey is hurt here on the bottom of your screen. Tannehill may know it and may be looking that way. Complete to number 88, Marcus Robinson. He's hurt, 20. Yancey is hurt, and they took advantage of him that time. Tannehill to Marcus Robinson, stopped by Yancey. Pick up a five. five. Second and five now from the 25. Yancey is the oldest player on the Georgia roster. He is uh, 24 years of age. Carlos Yancey, the injured. One advantage Georgia of player. the no huddle offense, you see somebody injured, you can take advantage of it. So Eric Robinson will come in to replace him. But on the same uh, token, you've got to give Yancey credit for making the tackle while hurt. Danny Hill, incomplete. Robinson couldn't hang on to the football. Edwards on the coverage for Georgia. Robert Edwards on the defense. Third down. Danny Hill had 13 touchdown passes last year, but he also had 20 interceptions. He's got to cut down those numbers if South Carolina is going to be better here in 1994. Seems to be making some pretty good reads tonight. Third and four. And has Marcus Robinson. But Robinson short. is short of the first down. So they're going to have fourth and about a yard. Fans here want him to go for it. Let's see if Brad Scott wants to go for it. They have gone on fourth down a couple of times tonight. see Marion Campbell in the black coat with that familiar pose that we have seen for many many years in the Atlanta metropolitan area for the Falcons there's the give and it's very close Stanley Pritchett the big man at 6'1 230 pounds it depends on where the mark is it looks like he has a first down They're going to measure. Georgia stacked it up pretty well inside there. They brought in Randall Godfrey, and he helped stop him, but I'm not sure he didn't have enough yardage for the first. We haven't seen a lot from Marion Randall Godfrey. Right? Marion Campbell there in the black coat. There's Frank Orgel, the linebacker coach in the red jacket. First down. So it's first down for South Carolina. When Marion decided to retire from the Falcons in November of 1989, I thought that we had probably seen the last of it. 
because he wanted to go fishing and he had been in the NFL for 30 years, but was lured out of retirement by Ray Goff and Vince Dooley. This is Bennett. And look at Brandon Bennett bust up the middle. Corey Johnson finally is able to wrestle him to the ground. But that's a tremendous pickup for Bennett. What a fine football player he is, Bill, on special teams and also from that, that running back slot. From Pick the running back nine. slot, and he catches passes on the, on the flare. Yep. Here's Danny Hill. And it's complete to Toby Cates. Toby Cates. See if that's enough for the first down. Should be. Jeff, you know, we have not seen very much of Randall Godfrey at all. No, he's been very quiet. He, not was, seen it. he has not been in the game that much. He came in on that uh, fourth down in one situation to stack it up in the middle. Candidate for the Butkus Award in 1994. Lounge County. Tanny Hill. He'll keep it. And He's in. Touchdown, Steve Tannehill. Tannehill with a terrific decision. Wanted to throw. Kep dives into the end zone and got the ball across. And South Carolina is right back at Georgia. What a great play that was by Tannehill. Look at him coming off the field. He is pumped up. There he is with Brad Scott. <laughs> Seems a lot more mature than the Steve Tannehill that we have seen over the past few years, who at times seemed like he was playing out of control. Reed Morton in for the point after attempt. Morton has been a very consistent kicker. And this one is up and it's good. So with 11 minutes, 20 seconds left in the third quarter, South Carolina and Georgia tied at 14. That was a terrific drive by South Carolina. Ten plays, 44 yards, and then this 10-yard rush by Steve Tannehill, who dives into the end zone, just gets the ball across, and we are all tied up at 14-14. Marty Simpson will kick off for South Carolina. The deep men for Georgia, Juan Daniels, number 12, number 23, Chris McCraney, and number 17, Jerry Jervin. It is going to be returned. This is German. Across the 20. And down at about the 24. Is that a late hit? It looked like it, and the penalty flag is down. Oh, a good break for Georgia. German takes a shot from Corey Bell, number 26, who hit him late. Let's take a look at how it happened. He is on the ground. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He could have easily jumped the pile or held up. After the play was over, laid hit on the defense, 15 yards, first down. So Georgia will take over the football at the 40-yard line. There they will have it first and 10. A couple of scores to pass along. The Florida-New Mexico State game is now a final. The Gators, 70 to 21. The Aggies of New Mexico State. Desire on first down. Complete! Has Jerry German. German across the middle. I talked with German earlier in the week, and he says that he has sort of an unwritten communication with Eric Zire, that they both know each other so well that they just have a great sense on a football field about what the other is doing. Well, this is just a quick hit. German with a nice move downfield and a good gain inside the 40. Ball spotted at the 38. Zaire dumps it out to Davis. Davis does a juggling act. And picks up a few yards. Hit by Ronnie Smith. Zaire to Harris and Ronnie Smith. He was from Athens. Zaire's numbers now 17 of 26, 297 yards. That changes with that one to 301 And now it's yards. 301, so he is over the 300-yard mark. Collins. 
for most every other quarterback in the world, that is a very special night. But for Eric Zier, it is just a typical night. Second and six. Oh, batted down. Batted down by David Turnipseed. An all-SEC candidate has a very quick step. Missed uh, the second half of the season for South Carolina when he had surgery on a tendon on his finger. Third down. And last year, he was the uh, SEC Player of the Week after the Georgia game, after the opener in Athens. He was everywhere that afternoon, so it seemed. So third and six. See what Zaire does out of the shotgun. Changing the plays, what he's doing here. It's getting very loud here in the stadium all of a sudden. And it's complete. But short of the first down to Chris McCraney. Does he have the first down? Yes. So how about that for a third down? And look at how he's tossed the ball around there. Look at the number of receivers. Thomas, McCraney is Hunter, now the Davis. eighth receiver. Eight receivers. Ball now at the 21. Sire up top incomplete. One in Chris McCraney. And found a lot of pressure coming from South Carolina. Jeff, have you ever have you ever heard of eight different people catching passes for a team before in one game? I, I have seen a little of it. Uh, I was in Utah during the days of Steve Young and Jim McMahon, and, and uh, you know they ran a very sophisticated offense and dumped the ball to a lot of receivers as well. But he is definitely in their class and, and surpasses them in so many different ways. Second and ten. Davis down. Pickup of perhaps three. Davis stopped by turn of the Third down. So another third down. Third and eight from the 19. Zyer has been tough on third down, but then he's been pretty tough on first and second down, too. <laughs> Jerry German in motion. Coming back the other way, Hassan Graham. Here is Graham. Fumble. South Carolina has it. Third Georgia turnover tonight. And Georgia keeps turning the ball as they are marching and moving and snuffing out these drives. Chris Rump on the recovery, his second of the night. He's been a very active man tonight. We've seen him all over the football field. The man who's made the move from linebacker to defensive end. It happens again, a fumble when George is driving for a touchdown, stripped out. South Carolina recovers, and man, oh man, that's not like fumbling on your own 30 or at midfield. You're in trying to score. Well, you can't keep doing that, particularly on the road. Danny Hill, the Bennett. Brandon Bennett. And Bennett has enough for the first down. Pickup of 13 yards. On the stop. The more you see Bennett, the more you like him. Give me the ball, he says. Bennett gets the ball and gets the yardage, and it's first down. He has tremendous hands. Tannehill, a short dump to Bennett again. Bennett with a good block. And look at this. Very close to another first down. Let's see where they mark it. Just short. And they're going to go with a no-huddle offense here. Jeff, I'm not so sure that... If South Carolina picks up some yardage here and is going with a no huddle at Georgia, shouldn't call timeout and stop the momentum a little bit. Second down and one. Let's see if they go to Stanley Pritchett. They do. And he has the first down for South Carolina. On those short yardage situations, he has been the man who has gotten the call, and he has delivered. No huddle offense, Georgia needs to stop this and maybe using a timeout is the way to do it. These are two teams with very entertaining offenses. 
I've been impressed with Tannehill tonight, too. Randall Godfrey, by the way, is that linebacker at the top of your screen standing on the 50 now. Bill, we haven't seen a lot of him tonight. This oh. is Bennett. And look at Bennett find ways to, Bennett. to pick up yards. He's stopped by Corey Johnson. But now they are into Georgia territory. Corey Johnson, now the stop. Georgia is in trouble right now. Second down. So second and six. Spotted at the 49 yard line. Philip Daniels is hurt. And Tannehill is sacked. There is that man for Georgia. Number 45 for the Bulldogs. That is Greg Bright. Well, the dogs needed a play like that because this was starting to get uh, starting to get very bad at South Carolina moving the ball easily on the Bulldogs. Number 54, Luther Dixon, doesn't have very many letters left on his jersey. First and 12. Danny Hill will keep it. And Tannehill Hill dives for the first down. Now remember, it is 14 to 14, six minutes left in the third quarter. Philip Daniels out of the game. And they missed him on that play. Corey Johnson. First down. Around Tannehill on the dive. Tannehill completes it to his flanker. That's Calvin Owens. Owens hit by Muschamp. Muschamp, Muschamp and Eric Zier, best friends. Muschamp. A safety and a quarterback. I guess it works that way. No huddle offense again for South Carolina. Second and seven. Pritchett and Bennett. This is Pritchett. Up the middle. There are a lot of friends of his from Douglas High School who are enjoying this telecast tonight. He looks good. Answering the question, whatever became of our friend Stanley Pritchard? Third down. <laughs> He's on Channel 5 tonight. It's a good drive for South Carolina. Danny Hill very much in control tonight. Almost intercepted by Corey Johnson. It was in Johnson's hands and he could not hang on to the football. Both these teams want to turn over the ball at the end of these drives. Danny Hill and his receiver were mixed up. Danny Hill went short and his receiver was deep. So fourth and three. Decision, decision. They will go for it. Brad Scott likes that reputation as a riverboat gambler, and he has lived up to it tonight. Not afraid to roll the dice on fourth down. So fourth and three, Tannehill. There's a flag. And it's incomplete. But let's see what the flag is. Robinson. Illegal procedure against the offense. Penalty is declined. First down. So the, so the ball goes over to Georgia. That's where Eric Zier and the offense will take over. We are tied. that are trying to improve uh, their team's lot from last season when both were under 500. Greg off on the right. Brad Scott on the left. First and 10 now from the 35-yard line. Sire now is thrown for over 320 yards. And that may go against Georgia. It looks like the rest of the Beatles lifted up a bit. Number 70. 
and he knows it. High school. For the ball, Lee Mutmada offense. Still first down. You know, we came into this game wondering about the health of Adam Meadows and Steve Roberts. Both had ankle problems. Both were hurting. Both are hurting. And both have been able to go almost the entire way tonight. I wasn't sure that we'd be able to see that. They practiced on Thursday, but that was all the practicing they did this week. Thankfully, it's not a hot night. That helped. The swing pass out to Davis, and he was covered. Sire did well just to throw that ball away. Had it been complete, I think he would have lost a couple of yards. Second and 15 from the 30-yard line. Desire's numbers, 21 of 33. I wonder if we're going to see Hines Ward at all tonight. Ray gave the impression that he would indeed play. And Hines thought so early in the week. Complete. The Hassan Graham. Graham's fourth catch of the night. Of course, he's long, 77 yards, second place in the scrimmage. Graham played high school ball at Southwest DeKalb. A player it seems like we've been talking about forever. Third and eight now. Complete Hassan Graham. Goodbye. Touchdown, Georgia. Just that quick. Hassan Graham strikes for his second touchdown of the game. Isn't he something? 63 yards. And Georgia is out in front. We continue to talk about Hassan Graham. You know, he played a lot when he was just a freshman, maybe even a sub-freshman at Southwest DeKalb. For Buck Godfrey. Yeah, for Buck Godfrey. They've had some great teams there. Boy, boy, what a tandem. Zyre and Graham. It's good. Georgia leads 21-14. We are in the third quarter at 350. Three plays, 65 yards. This the 63-yard home run to Hassan Graham. His second long touchdown of the evening. And Georgia leads 21-14. Reggie Richardson for South Carolina. Tackled and knocked out of bounds. I want to see the move that Hassan Graham makes here. A little push off to get clear, and he's gone. He's blows by him. He's got such great speed. Look, we came into this season knowing that Georgia is going to score a lot of points, but they have the ability to score on anybody at any time at any place on the football field. But also, there was the great concern about the defense, and I think that is held true also that uh, this Georgia defense, Marion Campbell is going to have his work cut out for him, I think, in 1994. Going to need to score some points. Bennett, trying to turn it outside. No. Randall Godfrey is there. Along with Marcus Williams. Godfrey, one of, one of the best that you will see. One of the best that I, I think that we have seen in Georgia in a long time. Though. Absolutely. And Ray Goff telling us today that Marcus Williams, the sophomore, is not far from being his equal. Out to Bennett. And Bennett is sacked. Bennett, the loss. Frank Watts is there. How about Frank Watts? Take a look at him. Number 58. He's 6'2", 245 pounds. Drafted by the Braves as a pitcher. Imagine a 245, 250-pound pitcher coming at you. you. You think John Smoltz and Avery are scary? Remember Terry Forster. <laughs> yeah, but he was a tub of goo, according to <laughs> David Letterman. They did George's defense a lot of good to do three and out here. So that means third and 16 from the 25. Danny Hill wants to take a timeout. Check out the scoreboard, some scores to pass along to you. 
at this hour. Next week, the Dogs will take on Tennessee in Athens. Colorado number seven over Northeast Louisiana, 48 to 13. Clemson beat Furman. Auburn. They don't lose games at Auburn anymore, do they? Although Mississippi gave them a scare today. Sure did. That was played uh, in Oxford, and Mississippi, not a bad football team. Let me give you an update on Tennessee UCLA. They are in the third quarter right now. The Bruins out in Los Angeles lead the Volunteers 15 to nothing. Keith Schuler, where are you tonight? I'm telling you. I wonder if Peyton Manning is in the game yet. The game was really a pick. I had a hard time trying to pick a winner of that game. Who did you pick? UCLA. Now you say it. Now I'm looking good. Third and 16. Tannehill sacked. Frank Watts there again. Where's this Georgia defense been all night? All of a sudden it has stood up. And that Braves draft pick with a high hard one. He's one the Braves didn't get away from the Bulldog football team. Boy, the defense needed that, and I'm sure the Georgia fans needed that. Simple fastball there. No slider or curve. Chris McCraney is deep for Georgia. The South Carolina must punt the ball away. I think they're going after this one. Let's see. Nope, they're dropping back to the return. And it's a short punt. It continues to be a problem for South Carolina. They don't have anybody that can punt the ball. Penalty flag down. McCraney is dropped at about the 35-yard line. That's a 16-yard return for Chris McCraney. He's also a baseball player, has those sure hands. At the prices those baseball players get, all good athletes are in some form a baseball player. See, I, I don't think it necessarily is a love of baseball. It's that some guys will do anything to get out of spring training uh, as far as football goes. <laughs> Good field position here, Jeff. Ball at the 46-yard line for Eric Zier. Jeff Coat has had two punts tonight for an average of 39. Zyra across the middle, and it's complete to Bryce Hunter. First down, Georgia, 29-yard line. And Eric Zyra's numbers just continue to increase and increase. Now over the 400-yard mark. How high will it go? Well, there's one minute and 28 seconds left in the third quarter. Zyra has every opportunity to eclipse what he did against Southern Miss last year at 544 yards. And Ray Goff told us today that uh, he'd be throwing to the last play. First and ten. Davis. Tired of Davis. To the 21-yard line. And if he is to the 21-yard line, he's going to be very, very close to another Georgia first down. He punished the tackler that time. Nice little underhand to Terrell Davis. Now watch him meet up with his tackler here and punishes it. Going to mark it at the 22, so a little more than a yard. Fly on the pitch. Davis, first down. 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Terry Cousin comes up from his left quarterback position. Would like to stop on Davis. I think the defensive stand fired up the offense. Davis, and they will whistle it. Flagged out. For the ball snap, movement by the offense. Five yards, still first down. Procedure against Georgia. So that'll make it first and 15 from the 20. There's been a little too much of that tonight, I think, on Georgia's side. A little too much. Of yeah, the they've had eight penalties, Bill. 66 yards. 
That's a lot. You see the clock? Right-hand corner of your screen. Could be the final play. German in motion. No. And that is very dangerous. That was not a good pass. Reggie Richardson thought he might have a shot with that ball as it was deflected. And that is the end of the third quarter. The Bulldogs lead the Gamecocks 21-14. to We'll be back for the final quarter on Channel 5 after this. We are back for the final 15 minutes of play from williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm Jeff Hellinger along with Bill Hartman here on Channel 5 seen a very entertaining football game tonight. A lot of offense, a lot of statistics, not necessarily a lot of points. There's been a lot of passing and a lot of people involved in both offenses. Second and 15 from the 20-yard line for Eric Zier. Incomplete, looking for Bryce Hunter. Tony Watkins was there. Their best player, perhaps, on defense. You can make the argument that David Turner sees. Also a tremendous player. And but uh, Watkins has been there. He needs 31 yards to pass Andre Ware on the NCAA all-time career passing list, 27. The statistics are boggling, the sire. I mean, it, 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 it just is. I mean, there's so many numbers to comprehend that uh, you try to stay focused on the score. Desire. Incomplete. Jeff Thomas was the intended receiver, but he was well covered by Richardson, number 20. And by number 7, DeAndre James. Well, that brings up fourth down, and it looks like they are going to kick the field goal. Janet Parkland. Who Goff told us has been a very good kicker uh, in the last couple of weeks. It's down. It is good. Cannon Parkman with the field goal and Georgia extends their lead to 10 points. It is 24 to 14 with 14 minutes and 43 seconds left. Uh, make sure that my IFB is sitting up. Well, across the nation on satellite and in Atlanta, Georgia, everybody heard me trying to get set up for when we do eyewitness news at 11 o'clock. I'll be back uh, after the game during the newscast to tell you what happened, recap some of the things that happened, and uh, Whatever just heard me setting up for I think this game is going to go past 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah. With all that passing. Eyewitness news at 11.15, probably or eyewitness news whenever. Cannon Parkman continues that strong Stone Mountain area tradition of terrific kickers. Kevin Butler, of course, needs no introduction to anybody who's followed the Georgia program over the years. Chris Gardaki, of course. Dax Langley came in hoping to take that job away from Cannon Parkman, and Parkman won the battle during the preseason. Reggie Richardson, the deep man, along with Brandon Bennett. Bennett is going to sleep well tonight. He has been in on, it seems like, every play on special teams and also with the offense. Parkman about to tee that ball up. Georgia leading by 10. It's a slow drive. This is Reggie Richardson. Reggie Richardson. Richardson out across the 36-yard line, and that is where Tannehill will take over. They're going to have to put it up. They have been doing plenty of that tonight. No huddle. Brad Scott calls this his fast break offense, and it definitely is that. When you don't huddle. First and ten. Incomplete. Will Muschamp on the coverage. Fans here at Williams Bryce thought they saw some interference. 
but they must have been seeing things because the referee did not see it either. There's not been enough one, two, three, and punt plays uh, series for Georgia. They need, that defense needs to make it happen. Tannehill there, no huddle again. What did Marcus Robinson? Incomplete. Frank Watts on the coverage for Georgia. So that means third down. It looked like they weren't ready there. Seemed like there was some confusion with South Carolina on that play, and that'll happen when you don't huddle up. Oftentimes, everybody's not on the same page. Swings it out to Bennett, incomplete. It was thrown behind him just a little bit. Thrown too hard, too. So fourth down. So for two straight series, the Georgia defense is going to force Carolina to punt. Marion Campbell has had a tremendous amount of success as a defensive assistant. Chris McCraney is deep, number 23. I'm interested to see how this defense develops in the weeks ahead. It's developed in the last 30 minutes, I'll tell you that. It has, and you know that it will continue. Jeff Coat with a good punt. This is McCraney. Up the middle. And to about the 27-yard line. That's where Georgia will take over. They lead by 10, 24-14, 14.02 left. Next week, the home opener for the Georgia Bulldogs in Athens. They will take on Tennessee. There's going to be a lot of people excited to see Georgia at home, but they're able to to hang on with this victory, and particularly that man, number 10, Eric Zier. It is a special treat to watch him play. He is an attraction like Herschel was an attraction. Complete. Hassan Graham. Graham at the 39-yard line. All-American night for Hassan Graham. Here's some scores. Florida, no mercy with New Mexico State. Ranked number one. Number two, Florida State over Virginia, 41-17. Started slow, but get it done. Notre Dame, 21-3 at halftime with Northwestern. Those are some of the college scores. We'll pass along a few more as time permits. Desire to complete. And complete to Juan Daniels. Desire goes to the right, then he goes to the left, then he goes up the middle. No way to figure out which way he's going to go. It makes so many good reads. And to who he is going to. Dan Henning's debut for Boston College in Ann Arbor. Tough place to go. 34-26 Wolverines. Tyrone Wheatley did not play in that game. Miami pounds Georgia Southern. Stowers. Penn State. High expectation. Lead the Gophers. 35-3 in the second quarter. Another first down for Georgia. Moving the ball, Zaire <laughs> has his man, Jerry German. Another first down, and they are just moving down the field. German says he likes to be compared to the former Falcon, and now Denver Bronco Mike Pritchard. They're physically built the same, and possession type receivers. Well, it's up here in the broadcast booth. We have a computer that totals up the stats, and it now says 461 yards for Eric Zier. Now that was a pickup of 17. German in motion, bottom of your screen. Zier going up top. One at Hassan Graham. Hassan wants the interference. He won't get it. Terry Cousin on the coverage. He had good coverage on Graham. Let's see how this front line protects Eric Zier here. Roberts is 79. Beatles is 70. Got it off. Adam Meadows, Steve Roberts. Talented pair. Alabama 42-13. Tennessee Chattanooga. Zire, sidearm. Just trying to get away the ball. He was being pressured by Aubrey Brooks. Exactly. He just wanted to get the ball away safely. So now third down. 
Roberts and Meadows are fun to watch. They are big and strong, and Meadows is a journalism major. The only man I know who can ask his own questions. <laughs> All right, ball spotted at the 34. 24-14, Georgia, 13-25 left. Out of bounds. German, German out of bounds. So that'll bring up fourth down. Zaire now 28 of 46 for 461 yards. That's a record against South Carolina, so he has stung South Carolina for the most yards ever. 62% completion mark. Cannon Parkman will attempt a 51-yard field goal. Experience the sounds of the Gamecock spirit on October 25th at the Carolina Coliseum. But a timeout has been called. 24-14, we are in the fourth quarter. Welcome back to Columbia, South Carolina on a cool night. It sure doesn't feel like September 3rd in South Carolina. It feels more like October. Cannon Parkland now. 51 yards out. It is on the way. Hits the crossbar. And no good. That is close. Cannon has never hit one over 50 yards in college. And he came very, very close there. Look how close it is. Another inch. And maybe it goes. He's That's saying, Ray, after look, I did almost. He's upset with himself. He wanted it badly. So South Carolina takes over the ball at the 34-yard line. They've got to put some points up. This is Bennett. Bennett, gain of two yards. Jeff, back to Cannon Parkman for just a moment. He kicked a 59-yarder as a high school player for Stone Mountain High School. There's Godfrey. There's Randall Godfrey, who made the stop. Kevin Butler, the best kicker that you've seen uh, in all of your years covering high Kevin school. Butler. Kevin Butler is the best, the best college kicker I've ever seen. And Teddy Hill sacked. Frank Watts on the stop. He has been very, very aggressive in this quarter and late in the third quarter as well. Jeff, I cannot get over how the Georgia defense has all of a sudden turned it around. This is what a lot of people thought Marion Campbell could do, and something has clicked about midway through the third quarter. Marion's a clever fellow. He will succeed. Tannehill on the run. He's still, still on the run. Into Georgia territory. 45, 43-yard line penalty flag. Wow. wow. Steve Tannehill. That was just a great play by a great player. Georgia did not need to hit him when he was on the ground. That's going to tack on some yardage. Should have been tackled. Stayed up somehow. Is this Fran Tarkington or what? <laughs> and then here comes the late hit. Yep. A couple of Georgia players took each other out there. Buster Owens. Got in the back. During the run, it'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. There was a dead ball after the foul. The play was over. 15 yards against the defense for piling on. It will be administered after the 10-yard penalty. It'll be an automatic first down. Well, the net result of it is South Carolina has the ball at the Georgia 43-yard line. First down. Bennett. Draw. Bennett. First down and more. Bennett. Knocked out by Randall Godfrey. What a run. I spoke too early. He has been a very busy man. 
Number 33 and number 18 are the horses on this team, aren't they? Tanny Hill and Bennett. Number 33. Expected to be a 1,000 yard runner this season. And if he gets enough carries, he may be able to do that. Over 3,000 in a career here in South Carolina. Bennett again, and again has a lot of running room to the 12 yard line. Bennett has 14 carries, 91 yards. Corey Johnson on the stop. Second and three, pickup of seven. Look at Tanny Hill say, get down, let's run the play. No huddle, rolling, throwing, incomplete. He was pressured by Randall Godfrey. We were posing the question, where is Godfrey earlier in the game? We're beginning to get our answer because he seems to be in, in every play. But here's the danger of having a fence placed where it is. That's Toby Cates. He is okay. But I'll tell you what, it's wet down there from the drizzle that we got in the first half. And he slid into that chain link fence, which hides behind the, uh, the bushes there. So third and three. 11 minutes, 11 seconds left. So like Tannehill had called a timeout. So they burned their second timeout. Carolina will have only one timeout left after this mistake. And Georgia has two remaining. Just over 11 minutes left in the game. There's Ray Goff. All along this week, he has said this is a very, his players have said it's more important than Goff has said. Goff is trying to play that down a little bit, but you talk to the players and they say, man, we got to have it. How has Ray Goff changed, Bill, in the years that you've known him? In the years that I've known him as a coach, he uh, has uh, toned his uh, talk down just a little bit. He's seen what coaching really means and what it means outside of the playing field, what it means throughout the state and the politics that goes with it. And there are a lot of politics. Brad Scott talked about that when he took the job here in South Carolina. South Carolina has had very little patience and has a reputation for doing a lot of meddling uh, in the academic side. But they've hired Eddie Fogler as the basketball coach here. Mike McGee is the athletic director. Duke rolls it up on Maryland. I saw some of that. Duke looked that? pretty good. North Carolina. Thought to be a pretty good team. Third and two. Bennett, first down. So the drive continues. And the clock runs. Is that Bennett or Stanley Pritchett? Pritchett, they stuffed it into the fullback and gave it to him. They've done that a couple of times tonight. He looks good to it. The short yardage back. First down. First and goal. First and goal from the six. Now under 11 minutes. Georgia up by 10, 24-14. Bennett trying to turn it outside. And that is a strong hit by Corey Johnson. He got his first start against Georgia Tech last year. Corey Johnson. Second and goal from the five. Tannehill in trouble. Tannehill throws. Touchdown. Bennett. Out of Brandon the Bennett. Matt Storm had the pressure all over Steve Tannehill, but Tannehill kept his cool, maintained his poise, saw Bennett in the end zone, made the pass. They get the score, and they have cut it. Look at that, 18 and 33, by far the best players on this team. So now South Carolina will attempt to get the point after and make it a three-point Georgia lead. 
This is Reed Morton. And it's good. So we have a heck of a football game that has gone this way all night. One Ten, more look at this. Tanny Hill. Great fake, wasn't it, Jeff? It was. Throw me the football. That's a tough pass. Look at the fake. Danny Hill's very hard to knock off his feet. He's just a great athlete. But you know, Bill, the, the Tanny Hill that we have seen in the past made a lot of bad decisions, and he has he has hit most of the right notes tonight. What a football game, and 75,000 people here in Columbia, South Carolina are loving it. We hope you are enjoying this game on Channel 5. Three plays, 66 yards. Love their football here in South Carolina. It's a great program waiting for a great football team. Jerry German and Chris McCranny are deep. Larry Bowie is also back there. Bowie would love to redeem himself. He's had two fumbles. Here's the kick by Morton. McCranny will watch it. They go out of bounds. George is going to take over on the 35. The procedure against the kicking team, kicking the ball out of bounds, goes to the receiving team at the 35. All right. Well, the Bulldogs need a drive here, Bill. Well, in the old days, you'd say a long drive, but I don't know if we'll see that here. Eric Zier now 28, no, 46, 461 yards. 61% completion. Zire. Penalty flag down. Incomplete. Big Davis. First and 20. That's a costly penalty. And the ball goes back to the 25 yard line. There are the numbers on Eric Zier. German in motion. Drop off to Davis. Davis trying to turn it to the outside, and he is wrestled out by DeAndra James, number seven. Clock stops. One of the reasons Terrell Davis is thought so highly of by NFL scouts is that he can catch the football. Pickup of seven. Davis again. Ronnie Smith there for the Gamecocks. Zyre to Davis. Ronnie Smith on the stop. Third down. Clock is running under 10 minutes. Georgia 24, South Carolina 21. Fans on their feet at Williams Price. They know how significant this down is. Across the middle, incomplete. One at Davis. Davis says he was held. But they will not get the call. Fourth down. Georgia will punt.
Toby Cates will be the deep man for South Carolina. And Brett Pellick will punt. Here's the punt. It's high, it's short. And South Carolina has decent field position at the 31-yard line. So we will see if the momentum continues to shift towards South Carolina. The fans are trying to do something about that. Tannehill has looked more and more confident as this game has progressed. And in tandem with Bennett, they are very tough right now. Bennett has 100 yards rushing, 231 yards all-purpose. And Tannehill's numbers are 21 for 36, 135 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. This is a good football game. Pritchard. Pick up of five. South Carolina's kicker is very good inside the 40-yard line. Doesn't have the, uh, the longest distance, but is a very solid kicker. Stanley Pritchard again gets the give. Picks up a couple of yards. South That'll Carolina would like a very long drive here. That'll bring up third and two, Bill. From the 40-yard line. Then he's going to change the call. Pritchard gets the call, a very conservative call indeed there, Bill. Well, 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 a big third down play coming up here. Let's see where they mark it. I, I think he's short, yeah. Am I blind or is that uh, half a yard short? You are not blind. Thank you. <laughs> the operation worked. <laughs> Derwin Jeffcoat into the ball game. He will punt it away. And a missed opportunity for South Carolina there. Chris McCrenny will be deep for Georgia. Jeff Cone tonight, four punts for an average of 40. His longest has been 51 yards. And this is a good one. Fair catch by McCrenny at the 15 yard line. 24 21, Georgia, 7 36 left. So the Georgia defense of Ray Goff with a pretty good stand there when it looked like uh, South Carolina was beginning to get even more momentum. They were trying to put an end to the crowd noise there and they did so at least temporarily. Georgia now with the ball at their own 16 yard line. Here's the pitch. It's to Davis. And Davis cuts it back across the middle. The hit is by Aubrey Brooks. That'll bring up second and four, a pickup of six. And Bill, that lets the clock run. Wonder if he'll stay on the ground here. Run some clock. Hassan Graham at the bottom of the screen. The pitch, Davis again. And Davis has the first down, goes out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Lee Wiggins on the tackle for South Carolina. Davis tonight now has nine carries for 36 yards. His longest has been 15. down from the 28. Play action. Zyre going long. 
And everybody is down. The referee. <laughs> the receiver in Jeff Thomas and the cover man in Reggie Richardson. Let's see if there's any contact here. There is contact. I'm not so sure that the Georgia player didn't pull down the defender. Looked like offensive interference, didn't it? Second and ten. Sire has now thrown 50 times today. Make it 51. Complete. As his man. That is Juan Daniels, the flanker. Sire to Juan Daniels. Daniels has had three receptions tonight. Reggie Richardson is there. Here comes the third down for it. Third and four, Bill. What do you do here? Clock is running. 6.19 left. They're up by three. You've got an angry and a hostile crowd building. Do what you do best. Throw it. Run it. <laughs> Davis. He's and short. He's short. Should have listened to you, Hull man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to do that. So South Carolina will get a chance. We're on the stop, number 27, that's Lee Wiggins, the freshman. Redshirt freshman. Toby Cates is the deep man for South Carolina. And Brett Pellock will do the punting. It is high and it is a good punt. Fair catch. 12-yard line. Steve Tannehill brings out his offensive squad. That's a good punt for Georgia. Any, anything inside the 20 there, good punt. Absolutely. Twenty-four, twenty-one is our score. We are in the fourth quarter. Five minutes, 22 seconds left. It has been this way throughout. Offenses have gone up and down and back and forth. Tannehill, complete, has his man. This is number 80. It is Monty Means, Randall Godfrey for Georgia. Means' first catch of the night. A lot of situation substitution going on for Georgia right now. Four new players came on the field that time. First down from the 29. Tannehill completes Marcus Robinson. Another first down for South Carolina. Corey Johnson. The coverage for Georgia, but not before the first down. Four minutes, 57 seconds left in this game. Clock becoming a factor. This is Bennett. And what a factor he has been. Into Georgia territory, face mask. Two flags are down. And South Carolina is in business. Owens. Inadvertent face mask. Let's watch it again, and you can see the face mask. It was clear to everyone. Inadvertent, however, which means I didn't mean to do it. Tell it to the referee. It's a five-yard penalty as opposed to a longer penalty. So that'll mark it up for 44. Clock running for 37. Danny Hill, complete. They continue to get the yards. Robinson makes another catch. 37-yard line. If that's so, that'll mean second and one. Got to put some pressure on Tannehill here, Bill. Oh, the to quick Bennett. snap. The trick snap. As the first down, Matt Storm, the tackle. Matt Storm, not the start. 
First down. First down. Look at him snap it to the up back on the 33. Bennett. And he just does get enough for the first down. First down. Bennett, 17 carries, 109 yards. What a terrific night he has had. Boy, he has. He's a great, great player. Tannehill swings it out. Complete to Monty Means, then drops it. The incomplete pass. That was Carlos Yancey making the play. He was hurt in the third quarter. It seems to be okay now. Means is the X receiver in this offense for South Carolina, known as a big play player. Luther Dixon, did you see his jersey? I think there are two letters left. Dixon has become X. Tannehill completes. Calvin Owen. Corey Johnson for Georgia. They continue to eat their way down the field and in the process are eating up the clock. 323 left. Georgia by three. This is a big play. Third and four now from the 28-yard line. They give to Bennett. Bennett first down, South Carolina. Oh, they when in doubt, you go to that man. He has been there all evening long for Brad Scott. The inside handoff here to Brandon Bennett, and he has the first down. Terrific and call. Flags all over the place. Believe it might be movement on the offensive line. Looks like a Tannehill was angry at his center. Of course, Vincent Dinkins. Vincent Dinkins. The anchor of the offensive line for South Carolina, the senior, injured his ankle in the first half. So they have had to uh, go to the backup. Chuck Kinder. Less than three. First and 15. Annie Hill. Across the middle. Intercepted! Intercepted by number 27, Corey Johnson. What a big play for Georgia to snuff out the drive with two minutes and 40 seconds left. Well, we've talked about it tonight, about Steve Tannehill making the right decisions, being patient, being patient. That time he forced the ball, Bill, makes the big mistake, which might be the critical mistake in this ball game. Here we go. Take a look at it. He throws it into that coverage. Corey Johnson makes the play and then makes the nice return on the ball. And with two minutes and 40 seconds to go, Georgia has a three-point lead and the football. There he is, Corey Johnson out of Forest Park. What a turnover and what a time for a turnover. So Georgia will keep it on the ground, trying to eat up that clock a little bit. There is Davis, picks up maybe two yards. And remember that Carolina has only one timeout left. And some of the folks beginning to file out of this stadium at williams Bryce. They think it's over. I don't see how you can leave this game. They are beginning to stream out. This is one of the tougher stadiums in the country in terms of traffic. It takes you forever to get out of here. There simply is no exit out of the stadium once you get beyond parking lots. It's some kind of angioplasty out there. <laughs> Second and 10 now from the 35. 204 left. Look at this. Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward, his first carry as a collegiate. The former quarterback. The all-everything player from the Atlanta metropolitan area. And how about that? He, he told me earlier in the week he thought he was going to play. Ray Goff told us tonight that he would play. And what a time to break off a run that he did. You know, Davis got up from that last play very slowly. And Hines comes into the ball game. Look at that. That says it all if you were a South Carolina fan. One minute, 37 seconds left. First down. Hines Ward again. 
And this time he is hit. Tony Watkins is there. He's up from the strong safety position. What a time to bring in a true freshman. Big games. The players say it's just huge. Trying to figure out what was going to happen to him in 94. If he would be red-shirted or if he would uh, be a return man on special teams. But he impressed so many people over the last couple of weeks that they decided to move him to that back position. And he said he's very open to it. He hasn't played it. He played quarterback, of course, in high school. And, and says he looks forward to the opportunity. He just wants to play. He just wants to get the ball. And you, you have the sense that he will. We're now under a minute. Second and six. What happened, Jeff, is that one day in scrimmage a couple of weeks ago, playing with the third team as quarterback, he made a fantastic run. Just an unbelievable run. And they had to give him a chance. He was the best they had on the field. Well, he is a remarkable player, or was in high school, and his first carry for the University of Georgia, 23 yards. Wow. Second and 12 now from the 44. 45 seconds left. Hines Ward again. Straight up the middle. Tackle by Ronnie Smith. Ward stopped by Smith. Coming out of high school, he was compared with Charlie Ward, the great Heisman Trophy winner from Florida State. No relation. But uh, wouldn't it be something if he turned out to be a great tailback in college? South Carolina has taken their final timeout. They can no longer do anything about the clock. 40 seconds left. Brad Scott, his debut as the head coach of South Carolina. It looked like they had something going, and they did. Tannehill was taking him down the field. They were eating up the clock. They were getting the yardage and the interception. By Corey Johnson. Well, as we look at Ray Goff during this timeout, uh, I believe that Eric Zier has now moved into second place on the single game passing yardage mark. He holds the first one, 544. Scott Hunter had second place with 484, and I believe we'll check that stat. With 485 yards, Eric Zier is now moved into second place. He's got first place. Scott Hunter, the old Alabama quarterback, had second place for most passing yards in a single game. But now Eric Zier has places number one and two. Third and five now. Ball at the 37. Heinz Ward. And he is going to be stopped short. Heinz Ward. Stacy Evans there for South Carolina. Clock runs 27, 26, 25. Well, they did not have to run another play. Georgia is going to win this football game. Ray Goff takes the opener. The Georgia Bulldogs have beat South Carolina here in Columbia, South Carolina. And they do it tonight, Bill, with defense. Midway in the third quarter, that Georgia defense found the key. Well, this was a great game tonight. It was terrific. It was wonderfully entertaining. A lot of offense, a lot of yardage, a, a number of turnovers and defense that looked interesting at times as well. We'll be back. Back again to Columbia, South Carolina, Georgia 24, South Carolina 21. Interesting game tonight. It's, it started well for Georgia, and uh, South Carolina hung in there, it seems, as though those offenses were going at each other all night, as though the, uh, the team that had the last possession would probably win, and that, that turned out to be the case tonight. There are a lot of statistics to talk about. You can go a lot of different ways. Eric Zier decided uh, to go with eight different receivers. Wow. Tonight, and, and that is just uh, boggling. And what also is boggling are his numbers tonight, Bill. 31 for 51, 485 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Steve Tannehill, on the other hand, was 25 for 42, 171 yards, two touchdowns. 
but he had two interceptions. Now, yep. you take away a couple of important Georgia fumbles there, and the dogs might have done better. But I think you got to give credit to Tanny Hill and Brandon Bennett because without those two guys, I don't think Carolina was in the game. Yeah, uh, Tanny Hill was okay tonight, but still, Bill, his problems from 1993 were the interceptions. He threw too many of them last year. Didn't throw a lot tonight, but the interception that he did throw was a, was a huge mistake. Cost his team the ball game. On the other hand, the thing that you like about Eric Zier, aside from the remarkable numbers and the poise and all all of the skills that he possesses uh, is he doesn't make the mistakes and you take a look at, at, at how few interceptions that he threw last year and uh, if that can continue into this season you like George's chances and again uh, the importance of winning that opening game getting ready to face Tennessee you can't underplay it because all year uh, last year in 1993 players would tell you that losing to South Carolina in that opener in Athens really was a backbreaker it is tough to be 0 and 1 and the other side story tonight is Heinz Ward makes his debut as a scat back at the University of Georgia with a 23-yard gain on his very first carry, and he was a quarterback two weeks ago. Yeah, I really, I, I lost the faith that Heinz <laughs> Ward was going to play tonight, but uh, when he got put in there in his first carry, 23 yards, that was the uh, stake uh, into the chest collectively of uh, South Carolina. And again, Georgia wins tonight, 24 to 21. We will come back to williams Bryce Stadium after this on Channel 5. Stay with us. Georgia Carolina football brought to you by the Buick dealers of Georgia Southern Bell small business services Saturn a different kind of company a different kind of car air south now you gotta go your Atlanta area Ford dealer Boston chicken the freshest thing going 96 rock tune in every morning with Chris Rude and the wake up crew your local Lincoln Mercury dealers and by the sports shoe 21 Metro Atlanta stores <laughs> 